No, oh, this was so stupid. Hello, welcome back. It's been a while. Hi everyone, my name is Grayson. I'm a fourth year at the University of Texas studying architectural engineering and architecture. And today I'm going to tell you about what you actually learn as an architectural engineering major. I have my degree plan pulled up. So I'm gonna go through each class and just kind of tell you what you actually learn. Cause like, I didn't know. Maybe this will help people. So today I'm just gonna go through the first two years of classes cause they're kind of like, I'll blend into one at this point, um, but yeah, let's get into the video. Okay, so first off, we have Intro to Architectural Engineering, which is just a one hour course. It's really simple. You meet once a week for an hour. I don't know if other schools have this, but I'm guessing they have something similar that just kind of intros you to the world of architectural engineering. And this was actually a really great class. It really teaches you like what the heck architectural engineering is, kind of different career paths you can go into or even specializations within your undergraduate degree, including structural engineering, mechanical engineering, or construction management, which are all super cool. Some of these other ones, we got chemistry, which is basically just like high school chemistry. You can get out of it if you do AP chemistry, but I didn't, so I had to take that. Differential and integral calculus, that is uh, AP Calculus AB. Rhetoric and writing, which is just a, a core requirement through the university that we have to have. The first year signature course is something special to UT. Other schools might have something similar, but it's just kind of like a freshman course to like learn about what a college course is like, I guess. Ice coffee. Second semester we got geology. You know, anything that deals with like the earth, you probably have to learn a little, a little bit about geology. And it's not technically a prereq for anything, I don't think, in my degree plan, but it should be a uh, like a prerequisite to like geotechnical engineering and foundation engineering and all that kind of good stuff. It's a really interesting class, honestly. I think everyone should take geology, even if they're not engineering majors or anything. Like everyone in the world should know about geology because it freaking rocks. <laughs> Sequence series and multivariable calculus, which is uh, awful. It's just the continuation calculus to, I'm pretty sure you also cover this in calculus BC. So it's just, you know, more calculus. I honestly can't tell you what I learned in that one because it was rough and it's blocked from my memory. Okay, engineering physics one and engineering physics one lab. This is just, you know, your, your standard engineering mechanics, calculus-based physics. If you pass the AP calculus C, mechanics test you can get out of that one. Architectural history, I don't know if other schools do this, but it's probably good to know a little bit about architectural history and like what buildings look like, I guess. A lot of the people at UT take um, Larry Speck's class, which is called Architecture and Society, and that's really great. You just learn about kind of what architects think about and what they learn. Just a little, little sneak peek. Oh, Social behavioral science, that's just another core requirement. It's like econ or human geography, something like that. Okay, year two, Semester one, let's go. Intro to computer methods. Honestly, if you if your school doesn't have a class like this, they probably should get with the times. Everything's, you know, computers and coding. It's basically a coding class. I've talked to a lot of people who have taken like the same course as me and they all learn different languages. It's like some people learned Fortran or MATLAB. I learned Python, but if it's for you, that's really good <laughs> because it, everything is being made better with coding. So if you can learn coding and you're like good at it and you like it then that means that you're probably gonna be you're gonna be set in terms of a job <laughs> statics 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 i like this class it's basically takes like the tiniest portion of physics which is static equilibrium and you just do it for a whole semester and you learn about different conditions common conditions you know like beams and cantilevers and columns and stuff like that Differential equations with linear algebra, just more calculus. I don't know why we take this one. I guess this one's like important. You kind of have to understand what a differential equation is because a lot of like the proofs that happen in like the later engineering classes, they use differential equations, but you, usually they like show you the proof and then you're like, oh yeah, I sort of remember that. It's like kind of in my brain. You gotta do it. Just another calculus class. Engineering Physics 2 and Physics 2 Lab. So this one is just all electricity and magnetism. I actually really enjoyed this class. It's uh, pretty fun. The labs are pretty fun. You get to do stuff with like static electricity and lasers and shit. 
and that's great. Yeah, I haven't used it that much moving forward in my degree, but it was still fun. American history, like I said, another core you can get out of that with AP classes and such. All right, moving on, spring semester, semester four of year two. Wait, no, semester two of year two, which would be semester four in total. I know math. I'm an engineer. Probability statistics for civil engineers. I'm actually in this right now as a fourth year because the way the prereqs work out is like, I don't actually have to take it then, but it's really interesting and it really is important. Probability and statistics are a very important part of engineering because you can't actually, as an engineer, like have exact answers every time. Like there's gonna be margins of error and that all has to do with probability. Like later on when you're designing, you know, like your steel column, okay, I have to reduce this by this much amount because I have, there's a certain probability of uncertainty. Mechanics of solids, um, So basically what solids is, it's like statics plus. It's like teaching you how to solve the statics problems that you can't solve with just basic statics and it uses material properties. Honestly, I did not do well in this class, but it was okay because it just kind of comes, keeps coming back. That's another thing about engineering is like all these fundamental classes, they're probably gonna be the hardest classes you take. And then when you get into the upper levels, you build off them. Um, but you can like go back and review and reinforce like the things that you actually need to know. Solid is a, is a class. Elementary mechanics of fluids. Wait. Okay, so they have fluids in here. I had to take um, applied thermodynamics and fluids. I remember we did a lot of piston problems in thermodynamics. <laughs> And then we did a lot of cycle stuff because thermodynamics is how like an HVAC system works or any type of engine, like a car engine or an electric generator. It was pretty interesting, honestly. Fluid mechanics is a lot about like how fluids behave with like pressures and flow and stuff like that. You do a lot of like, pipe problems and stuff like, oh, when like it like gets smaller, it goes faster. That makes sense. <laughs> engineering communications. So I'm guessing most schools have some sort of engineering communications class. It seems like a blow up, but it's actually pretty interesting. Like my engineering communication class was very catered towards us and like things that we would actually need in our real life. So we learned about like how to like write a resume and write a cover letter and write thank you letters and apology letters and all these kind of letters to be like, you know, formal and civil and be like nice to people. It was also an ethics course, so we learned about different ethical problems in the civil and architectural engineering world and just things that we should, you know, be on the lookout for. Computer aided design and graphics. I actually haven't taken this class. I know some people who have, but basically it's a class that teaches you how to use a lot of the different softwares that they use like CAD and Revit and I guess that's it. There's another American history, again, dumb. That's the end of the show. I probably should have <laughs> ended it on a sort of higher note there. So that is all the classes that you would take in your first two years as an architectural engineering major. If you have any more questions, make sure to leave them below. Or if you have like more videos you want to see me uh, talk about, I'd be happy to make it, even though we don't know when the next one's going to come out because this one took like if you are interested in this kind of stuff and you want to learn more, then subscribe to the channel. Maybe like the video, share with your friends. I don't know why I did that. Bye! You're still here?